So I'm going to begin by asking, uh, what, what does the, the real uh, Brittany make of this movie? And what, how did she react when you first told her you were going to be turning her story into a film? Hated uh, it. <laughs> she, we're not speaking. No one's talking to her now. She, <laughs> she, uh, I said to her, I don't know if I should tell you this, but I'm writing a movie about you. She said, what's it called? I said, it's called Brittany Runs a Marathon. She said, how fast does she run it in? <laughs> and then from there, we sort of had a talk about the larger themes and what I was interested in exploring. And she's been really great. She's, you know, I, she's the first person I give every script to anyway. And so I gave her the very first version of this and uh, asked for her thoughts. And she was, you, she was uh, helpful, but also respectful of the fact that it was, you know, a, 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 it's a recreation. It's not a recreation. It's a it's a fictional version of her journey uh, inspired by her emotional journey. Uh, but she loves that uh, something that was inspired by her is inspiring other people now. She's really happy about that. So was it quite strange meeting her? Because usually I guess there's a detachment from somebody you're kind of playing on screen. Or they could be a sort of historical figure or something like that. But you not only were you playing someone that, that is, is real, but someone that I imagine was sort of maybe on set a couple of times or someone obviously that Paul knows so well. How, yeah, how was that? I usually play a lot of um, weird women that don't really exist in the real world. And this was like a wonderful human being that I wanted to get right. And, and I had my, my own reaction and response to who she was on the page and and then you know I, I didn't get to meet her until she came to set and um, Paul had sent me a video of her when she was raising money for the marathon and I sort of got like who she was as a human being and her lightness and and her spark and and wanted to relay that as best as possible but um, meeting her in person I was very protective of her I just wanted to make sure we got it right and and that telling her you know that I've experienced as much as I could uh, of the journey I lost 40 pounds doing it in the physical sense and in the emotional sense I've gone through it since I was a kid um, so I I just I just wanted her to 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 like what we were mm. doing and thank God she does mm. <laughs> Thank God. Because <laughs> yeah, I mean, how was it helpful? Because when the character's going for a physical transformation, if you're matching that in real life, does that do you think that helps just emotionally, just getting into that headspace? It does. Yeah. It does. It placed me there. Like I was. I mean, this is the first film I attached to seven months before we even started shooting, and and once I started doing the exercise and losing the weight, and and I was, you know, at the same time memorizing the script as if it was a play, um, so that I could kind of tap into. The emotional space I had to be in whenever, you know, whatever given day. It was at one point, I remember you calling me and saying, we're figuring out the schedule right now because right now as we have it, you're either running or crying every day. <laughs> and, and so we want it to be a little bit lighter. Um, but, um, but, you know, it was a lot emotionally and physically. So I just wanted to prepare as much as I could for both. But being in that for a long period of time was was more difficult and challenging, I think, than I imagined. There yeah, was also the blowing between the, yourself and the character in the sense that when you're losing 40 pounds, were you losing the 40 pounds as Gillian or as Brittany? You know, kind of, off, was that, did it, did it feel like there was an odd blowing? I don't know. I yeah. felt like it was kind of, there was a crossover <laughs> at some point and I I couldn't quite tell, not to sound like too method of an actor, but I, but I really was, I was so protective of her and then I was protective of my own feelings about my own journey with, with my body and weight and and all of that and and then the story I was trying to tell with Paul's you know vision and and uh, so they were kind of both coming in in at the same point I can't tell you I mean this but having said all that I mean this isn't a weight loss movie there's so much more to this film than that I was wondering about what, what do you think is the res resonance with people let's say you've people out there who are ridiculously healthy and they drink sort of green smoothies every breakfast uh, every day for breakfast already what, what's their connection here what, what do you say is the, the, the universal theme I am not a runner and I've never had body image issues but what I what I the, my end of the, telling this story was about sort of a, it's a coming out story it's the fact that everybody at any age has the right to reclaim their life to set a new goal, a new vision for themselves, and to live authentically if they feel they've been living inauthentically or in a box or in a bubble or in a role that someone else has relegated them to. So the idea of this film is men, women of any age, of any shape, of any ethnicity or background can relate to the lead character as themselves, see themselves in the humor of this character, see themselves in the pain of this character, and see themselves in the ultimate triumph of this character. And I mean, the film definitely had a profound effect to me because when I left, I tried to sign up to be a dog sitter. Yeah, you but did. no one, no one's employed me yet. No, yeah, no. No, I made that no. job up. <laughs> the, jo oh. the job in the film. I mean, dog yeah. sitters is not a job I made yeah. up, but the the job in the film is yeah. Brittany like, it's, that's a pretty sweet, that's lovely a sweet job. Because yeah. yeah. I was going to ask, what's the sweetest job you've ever had? 
Sweetest yeah. job I ever had was directing this angel in a movie called <laughs> Three Heroes oh, of Marathon. That's very sweet. I did dog sit, so I will say that was yeah. one of my no, no. I um, actually yes, I really enjoy dogs, yeah. so I'm gonna I'm gonna take that. <laughs> and I, I don't mean to make you blush, Gillian, but but you're brilliant in the movie. I was Thank wondering, you. Paul, what was it about Gillian that made that made her perfect for this role? Was it her beauty? <laughs> <laughs> I'd always been a fan of her comedy. I'd known her as a comedic actress. 22 Jump Street, I was like, oh my God, that woman. Who is she? She's amazing. And then when we met to talk about the role, there was a whole other side to her that was uh, vulnerable and patient and insightful and smart and considerate of every emotional beat. And it just felt like you know, we were going to be able to team up together, at, at first cerebrally and then dramatically. And my final question, it was just, uh, I was just wondering about what's, I'm not sure if you if you guys ever do run now at all, but if you did, what's be on your running playlist? Do you have a kind of songs you like to exercise to? Pitbull. Oh, mm. oh yeah, I did have Pitbull. <laughs> I had a lot of Pitbull on my playlist and Chance the Rapper and Diplo, just like fun, energetic music where people are saying, you got this. Like yeah. literally they're saying the words, you got this and you can do it and so not like Morrissey or something. Yeah, like that. no, not as much Morrissey. <laughs> Mine, I, I wear uh, earplugs at Barry's boot camp because I just can't deal with any more stimuli than <laughs> than the running. <laughs> That's so true. But if I keep, I'm actually going to go this time. Oh, later. Okay. <laughs> One more time. Okay.